Sister Adiola, thank you very much for coming to see us on this very cold morning in Glasgow. Thank you very much for having me. Now, um, I want to hear from you how you made the, 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 your journey to Islam. How did it begin? Uh, so, uh, I grew up in a Christian household. Uh, I grew up in a Nigerian Christian household, so I went to church every Sunday. I went to different groups. Uh, Which denomination? Protestant. Protestant. Um, but when I was in my early 20s, so I'm 29 now, when I was in my early 20s, I just found that something was missing. Um, I found that I just didn't have that connection with the church and with God that I you know, um, had when I was younger. And I, Was there any specific experience that triggered this? Or you were just thinking about it? I was just thinking about it. I just realized when I was going to church that I just, I just wasn't, I just wasn't feeling it. <laughs> mm. um, I don't know how to describe it, but I just wasn't feeling it in the same way. Um, I had a lot of questions when I went to different groups as well that I just I wasn't satisfied with the answers, um, and I couldn't find the answers for myself within Christi Christianity. Uh, so I made the decision to stop going to church for the time being at that time and just explore other things. So there was no doubt in my mind that I still believed in God. That wasn't the issue, but I just needed to find something else. Um, my best friend, since I was 15 years old, is born Muslim. Uh, her mom is a revert and they're from Singapore. Uh, so um, I'm lucky that I always had a family that were Muslim that I was close to that I was able to ask questions from. So my friend's mother gave me a couple of books um, for me to read and um, that she used also in her journey. Um, and uh, I just decided, okay, I'm going to just read into it. I didn't have any expectations at that point. I wasn't even thinking at that point about reverse, you know, I just wanted to learn. Do you remember if those, if those two books were translated from Arabic or were they written in English? Do you remember anything about them? They were written in English, in English. Um, and they weren't very long. Um, it was really just um, the books were just kind of a journey and guide to Islam, just summarizing what Islam is and um, teachings of the Quran. Yes. So apparently it's really your relationship with your friend and her family that uh, paved the way for you. Yes, yeah. They always joked when I was a lot younger that, um, you know, inshallah, one day you'll revert. But I, you know, I didn't really, I didn't really, I didn't know what to think at that point. It was just a running joke. But actually, um, having them in my life since I was a teenager, it's, that's always been really helpful in my journey to uh, Islam. Um, I, around that time as well, I met my now husband, uh, who's born Muslim. Uh, and uh, that probably encouraged me to be more proactive with it. So I was already reading uh, and trying to figure out if it was right for me. But obviously him being born Muslim and, you know. Where from? Pakistan. Oh. Yeah. Uh, so I, I actually when you met him, you, you were already reading something about Islam. Yes, I was already reading something about uh, Islam, but I wasn't at the stage of I'm going to revert yet. Um, so when I met him uh, after uh, speaking for some time, and uh, then I was... I felt more motivated and encouraged, like, okay, yes, I think I need to, I need to do this. So I spent quite a long time, actually, before, from when I first read to um, then actually make the decision to say my shahada. So it was a, probably about almost a year uh, in that time. Well, it's not an easy decision. It's not an easy decision. I, was, I really did not <laughs> want to rush the decision. I wanted to make sure it was right for me. And my now husband also um, was of that mindset that I need to make sure it's, it's right for me. And he didn't push me or rush me in any way. He was very, very patient. Uh, so I think that that really uh, helped as well. Because once you enter into Islam, you enter into com an entirely different way of life. Yes. And this will have its repercussions as well. Yes, exactly. And I, I think I had the assumption that I needed to be perfect before I said my shahada. Uh, <laughs> and I needed to just... We can never be but perfect. We can never be perfect. <laughs> and, and I mean, that's what my husband said. He said, you can never be perfect. Just, just do it. If you want to sure. do it, just do it. And so I did. Yeah. Now... What was the response of your family? Uh, so uh, my mom uh, was very uh, supportive. Um, oh. I found out actually at the time that she never told me this, but um, uh, her dad, my granddad, actually was born Muslim. Oh, really? Yes, yeah. So um, in Nigeria, it's common to have more than one wife. So he had more than one wife. And so some wives were Muslim, some wives were Christian. Um, my mom's mom, my grandma, was Christian. So that's why my mom was raised Christian, but I have aunties and siblings that are Muslim. Um, I'm born Muslim and they're still Muslim. Some of your relatives, Some of my relatives were already yeah, Muslim. Already Muslim. Uh, so she was like, oh, okay, yes, she was very familiar with it. She grew up around the mosque. She didn't really have any sort of issue. Um, she just wanted to make sure that the decision was being made by me. 
my dad was also supportive, but I think he was just skeptical. He was just skeptical. He was just worried that uh, I wasn't making the decision for myself. Uh-huh. Yes, yeah. He was just make, <laughs> wanted to make sure, like, do you do you really want to do this? Um, and once he realised that I did, he was he's been he's been very supportive in um, about everything. You know, when I visit, he always makes sure there's halal. Uh, halal food. Um, yeah, he's very he's very supportive. Well, that's wonderful because you see the the the, the most sort of regrettable thing in uh, in these situations is when family ties are severed. Yes. And uh, for you, luckily, uh, family be- remain intact. Yes. Yeah. It was it was a difficult conversation. You know, I'm not going to pretend it wasn't. It was a very difficult. Oh, it was. It, it was. I was just very nervous um, because it was. I don't think anyone was expecting it. Because um, at the time I was making this journey, I was studying uh, in Glasgow, so I wasn't living at home. So um, it's not, it's not. No one would have been expecting that when I come back home, suddenly I'm, I'm going to be Muslim. Uh, so it was, uh, it was a difficult conversation, but um, they were very supportive uh, in the end, and um, they love my husband and they love his family. So and vice versa. And uh, what about your friends, your acquaintances, people whom you hang out uh, about with? Uh, uh, before you uh, embrace Islam? Uh, well, ironically, um, the majority of my friends uh, are Muslim anyway. Uh, so, <laughs> yeah, and then, uh, so I, maybe, I think I have maybe a couple uh, that are not, maybe two or three close friends that are not Muslim, but they are religious. Um, um, or if they're not religious, they have a close friend that is Muslim. So uh, they were, again, supportive. There wasn't any... Uh, there wasn't any kind of issue. It was just, you know, just making sure again that I was making the decision for myself. Now, uh, having uh, converted to Islam and become married to uh, uh, a, a, a born Muslim, a person who was born born as a Muslim, what was what was it like being part of his own community? Uh, it was it was interesting. <laughs> I'll say that. <laughs> Uh, so I found not straightforward. It, right? no, it wasn't straightforward. I will say that. So I think being in Glasgow really helps because there is already a revert community. So I found more of a home in that. I um, I know you spoke with Sister Lindsay before, so I've known Lindsay for years, um, and uh, so that element of it I think was really uh, helpful and useful for me being amongst people who understand where I'm coming from. Um, but it was very nerve wracking uh, going into the mosque kind of on my own into a community um, of people who are Muslims who are not reverts, that that was quite uh, difficult. You know, some people might assume uh, even outside the mosque that I'm not Muslim um, or, you know, there's elements of colorism as well where, you know, so, it, you know that's just, that's things like that just happen. Um, you know, I, could, I would say something like, come to people outside the mosque and they just wouldn't say it back. Um, not not everyone, but some people. So, um, yeah, that, that element, was, I, found, I found it difficult to fit in. Um, sometimes, but I'm lucky that my husband's family are really uh, supportive, um, and you know they they've been they've been really nice um, from from the beginning. So they embraced you. They embraced me. I'm very lucky that that was the situ- that, that was the situation. Um, it wasn't easy in all <laughs> in all aspects, but um, they they embraced me. Um, so I'm, I'm glad that, that I had that. Have you been to Nigeria since then? You haven't? I have not said so. I, the last time I went was uh, right before uh, I said my shahada, um, but I have not been. I was curious to know what uh, what the community there would uh, yes would, would have uh, said. <laughs> yeah, I know, I know, and I'm, I've been curious about that myself <laughs> actually. Um, so I, I do intend, inshallah, to go uh, someday, um, uh, along with my husband as well. Um, but I think I think you know they would be supportive. I think they, they all know, um, you know, obviously since we had our uh, Nikah and our Walima, you know, every, everyone came together. So, Because most of the, uh, 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 correct me if I'm wrong, but uh, my impression is that there are more Muslims in the north of Nigeria than in, in, the, in the middle and the south, right? Um, it's, it, well... Or not necessarily? Not necessarily. I mean, the... In the north, pretty much everyone there is is Muslim. I think that's probably accurate. But um, even um, in other parts, Nigeria, uh, you know, a lot of people are Muslim. Um, you know, the president uh, is Muslim. Um, it's it's a pretty fifty fifty. Um, you know, there's there's a lot of Muslims. So Islam is not unfamiliar in Nigeria at all. And if, if you walk in the street, you will see um, many people uh, who are visibly Muslim, and that and that's the norm. Now, uh, in your case. As in the case of uh, sisters I spoke to who married uh, a Muslim man, 
it seems on the surface that the challenges are not uh, that tough. Mm -hmm. But there must be some challenges in changing the way of life, in making that transition. Yeah, no, there is, there was, there is, there is, and there was definitely uh, challenges. So just wanting to fit into a culture, but then still, I still wanted to represent my own, you know, um, I'm Muslim, but I'm still Nigerian. Um, and um, there's, there's so many challenges in just trying to be the right type of Muslim um, in accordance with what, you know, different family members think. And that, that'll be different amongst different family members. And um, that, that, Trying to figure that out um, has been, I wouldn't say challenging, but just a little bit, a little bit difficult. Um, you know, what to say, what not to say, how to say certain things, pronunciation. I'm very nervous about how I pronounce things. I never want to say things in the incorrect way. So, you know, just trying to figure out the the right way to be the kind of the best Muslim. Um, but I think I'm learning to not not be too anxious and too nervous about that because it's a it's a journey. Now, is there here in Glasgow a growing uh, reverse community? Yes, it's, I think it's huge. Um, since I've, so I've been here since maybe 2017. Um, and it's, it's been really big. You know, there's a, you know, reverts um, Facebook group, reverts WhatsApp group um, within Glasgow. And that, that's continuously growing with, with people being added to the group and wanting to find out more about uh, uh, Islam. Um, there's, there's a lot of reverts here. And it helps. It does help. It really does help, um, especially in the beginning, where you just you just don't know what you're doing and you don't know what um, what sources to turn to online. You know, some some of some sources can appear to be correct, but they're not. So um, it really does help having sisters who are in different stages of their journey to speak to them and um, gain support from them. Have you been to any Muslim countries since you converted? Uh, well, I went. We just visited Dubai recently. Um, and that was that was amazing. Just you like that? Yes, it was just just here in the Azan, like just in the shopping center. I was like, oh, this is so nice. Um, I found it. Um, yeah, I, I thought I thought it was really really nice to be in a Muslim uh, Muslim country. Inshallah, one day we'll move somewhere. <laughs> um, you haven't done Umrah yet or Hajj or anything. I've not done that yet. No, but um, Inshallah, one day, one day soon. Um, in terms of uh, bringing up. Uh, uh, a family in uh, in a country like this um any challenges um well i guess it's just it's quite difficult i think in this day and age to i'm not i'm not a parent at this point in time but i think from what i've seen um a lot of people i know have found it difficult to raise their children um in accordance with islamic principles and um with you know um what the quran says but then there's society teaches a different way um society has different opinions so i think that can be quite that can be quite difficult um but i'm not i don't have experience of that at this at this stage um but there is there's, in glasgow in particular there is a big muslim community and it is really diverse and um, so there's pockets of glasgow where you can comfortably be within your own community and um, so i think that's that's really important uh, I was talking to Sister uh, Lindsay about uh, her work in combating Islamophobia mm -hmm. uh, as part of uh, MEND. Mm -hmm. uh, do you feel such pressure of Islamophobia as you go about in this country? Uh, when I wear hijab, yes. Mm. Uh, if I'm not wearing hijab, then no, because no one would know that I am Muslim. Um, so you become the other yeah, immediately. Yeah, I mean, yeah. So you know, if I'm, you know, visibly wearing a hijab, then there's a lot of Islamophobia, um, and then that's there's a double-edged sword of them being, uh, you know, of African heritage, being black, and then being a woman. So um, yeah. yeah, it's like yeah, I've, I've got it all. <laughs> three all together. I've got three all together. Um, so th I've definitely had experiences uh, of, of of that, um, but I think you know, if I'm not, if I'm not. If I'm not wearing a jab, then people might not assume that I'm a Muslim, and I wouldn't really experience the same sense of Islamophobia as those who as those who do. You told me you're of Nigerian origin, but were you born in Nigeria or were you born here in this country? I was born here, so I was born in Cambridge, in uh, England, where my dad was studying. 
Ah, he was a student in Cambridge. Yes, yeah. And then you came to study here in Glasgow yourself. So yeah, he was a student in Cambridge. Then we moved to Aberdeen. That's where I grew up, Aberdeen, Scotland. So it's in the north. Um, and then I stayed there until I um, was ready to study in university. And then I moved to Glasgow on my own. And what do you do now? What? Uh... Uh, currently, I'm working as a learning support and development advisor in higher education. Uh, this is what uh, part of a university yeah, or yeah uh, part of a part of a part of a college um a postgraduate college or is it uh, so it's a it's a co- so it's like the college before it's a stage before university so after high school but before university oh it's uh, where they do the a levels um well, a bit it's a bit above that um so it's just it's, you, can, you can gain different types of qualifications um for different subjects you don't necessarily it's for people who don't necessarily need to or want to go to university. Ah, oh, they do something else, like yes, a, something a diploma. Else. Or... Yeah, like a diploma. Yeah, yeah, or like a school. Here we call it like a HND or an HNC. And usually, are these are mature students. Um, it's a mix. Yeah. yeah, so there's young young people who come straight from school, um, and then students who are, are mature. Um, so um, that's that's my role. At the but college. Your work is administrative, or uh, are you in touch, in direct contact with the uh, students? Themselves? Direct contact, yeah, direct contact with students. Um, so the the main my main role is supporting students with supporting and assessing students with additional support needs. Um, mm. That's that's my main role. And uh, does that uh, raise issues uh, in terms of you being a Muslim, or it doesn't matter? No, I mean the higher education is well, in my experience, is pretty. Um, diverse. Well, the, the, the specific college that I work in is is pretty diverse, um, so it's not raised any issues so far. So uh, people from all backgrounds. Yes. Yeah. I mean, there's always an element of like I'm always going to be the minority. I think in every job I've had, I have I am the minority, and I am the only <laughs> one that looks like me. In most in most cases, that that's a given. Um, but it's actually been there's been negatives to it, but then also I've been able to educate people who are not familiar with even just teaching people about what what Ramadan means and what that looks like for people who who have no idea um yeah that that's quite nice so you you talk uh, to to the students about what you do as a muslim and um, not not to the students but in terms of like you know to colleagues mm. um, and you know teaching them like you know what what this means for me and what does what it looks like for me and you know what we do during the day in Ramadan and what you know why why we go to mosque and um you know what Eid means and because a lot of people you know they might know that oh yeah you know muslims they do this eid thing but they don't actually understand uh what what it means and um you know what what we do and you know why we fast um so i think it's really important i find i've always found it really important to educate people on on those things just to um you know just to kind of alleviate any kind of misconceptions now on the basis of your uh, own experience do you think people are growing more understanding of islam or are we still having the same problems of misconceptions and ill judging? Um, I think it's a bit mixed. Uh, so I think it depends on what space you look at. I think sometimes if you look on looking on social media, it's not very it's not very positive. It's quite negative. Um, but then you know, speaking to people in real life in your own you know different communities, I think it's not it's not as bad. Um, but there's still there's still misconceptions in terms of you know about like you know the rights of women, um, and you know there's things going on in the world that are giving people uh, I think the wrong impression of what Islam is because people are confusing culture with Islam and what the t- actual teachings are. Um, so I think I think it's mixed. I don't think it's one way or another, but definitely Islamophobia is is uh, on the rise. That's not that's not reducing. So that's something that's still a priority. Um, although uh, with the recent uh, uh, football uh, cup in uh, World Cup in in Qatar, probably uh, Islam has had uh, much more exp- exposure than ever before. <laughs> yes, and that's been amazing. It's, it's actually got people talking about it and learning about it. I saw a really interesting um, video uh, of it was just on social media of uh, people who I think they were from Australia and they went to the, for the World Cup in Qatar and they were eating the local food and they were talking about how lovely they found it and how lovely the people are and how they were given all these books on uh, Islam and they found, you know, they, they were not talking about reverting in any way, but they just found um, the experience and the people and the culture and um, the initial teachings that they had really, really um, 
interesting. Um, and so that was really nice to see. <laughs> well, Sister Aniola, thank you very much. It's been a pleasure talking to you. Thank you. Thank you thank so you. much. Thank you.